I'm Scott Moore, and I'm a performance engineer. I help to make software and applications faster, better, more resilient. Lately, there's one thing on my mind. Where's the best barbecue at, man? So I'm going across the country talking about performance engineering and barbecue. Join me as we take the performance tour. interaction with your customer. Whenever I'm talking to potential clients or somebody brings me in to talk about performance, I don't start with the technical and the beginning of the software development lifecycle first. I start with the end because it's not about um, what you're doing technically to make this wonderful piece of software. It's about what happens when the customer interacts with it. That interaction with the customer from a performance standpoint, we call that the digital experience. And in-user monitoring enables you to, to get that information early and often. Maybe it's through some synthetic way, which would be sort of like a robot, a script that runs on a periodic basis, and you get metrics from that. It also may come from real user monitoring, which is real users using their browser or using that software and taking those that telemetry and I think the best solution to that is marrying the two. Some synthetic, some real users. And by placing monitoring software in the right places, you can get a really good picture of what's happening. Because let's face it, if the application, if you've done all this wonderful stuff, hired the best coders, the best database architects, and they've done everything they can, but that first experience with the customer is a poor performing application, your application is going to be considered to be suck. And that's just the bottom line. So what is application performance monitoring? At least defined by Gartner and some of the other industry experts out there like me. Well, we have a three layer cake. The top of the cake is the digital experience, and that's made up of synthetic timings. You could think of these as robots or pre-programmed scripts that go out and check how long is the page taking from a certain location, but from a computer's perspective. Then you have real user sessions or real user monitoring. Yes, that's real people using your application real time, and something is taking a metric and and bringing that back to help create a graph for the IT people to see. The middle layer and the bottom layer of these cakes, these are actually going to be separate episodes of the performance tour. So we'll address those later, but know that there's a lot to application performance monitoring. We're just dealing with the top layer right now, the digital experience. For those of you not familiar with digital experience monitoring, let's break it down and show you a simple example. Let's say I want to go to a wonderful website like scottmore.consulting just to look at that handsome man on the page. <sighs> yeah, so I want to know how long does that page take to load? Well, I could put a stopwatch in my hand and load the page, but there's better ways to do that. How about we use something like Web Page Test or GT Metrics? We type in the name of my site I want to go to, click start. We're going to use a cable modem, which is a little bit less maybe than some corporate networks with giant pipes and bandwidth. But we start the test, we'll see something that looks like this. On the left hand side, you're going to see this waterfall view of my web page. What is that? All the small elements that make up my page that come to you um, seemingly all at once, sometimes slower than other web pages, and they make up my page. On the right is a screenshot of the resulting page. These key metrics up here at the top are how long did it take that web page to load from that location for that instance, and how long did it take before the web page was actually usable? Maybe that's 
printing, showing text on a screen or enabling the user to utilize something like click a button. So the main point is this was done synthetically. That is not as I'm using the application because if I were actually using the application, I would be here and I'd be clicking around and something would be actually timing it behind the scenes without me doing anything. Here, I actually initiated the test and told webpage test, you go out, run a robot and give me this information. Now, Catchpoint has a wonderful dashboard that shows you both synthetic monitoring, like I just showed you, plus that real user monitoring that's part of their solution. And they give you all of these metrics and they actually tie it to how many people are viewing your web page, what's your bounce rate. It kind of ties into some of your marketing views and there's tons of other views we haven't seen. You can also trace down from a particular location through the internet. So these are various places geographically that are going through various providers, internet service providers, backbone providers, and they take different routes every time. So some may be longer than others, but you would be able from this graphic to see these different slices of time and where things are being, where the time is being spent here. So at a very high level, that's digital experience monitoring. Obviously there's much more to it than I can get into here, but you get the gist of it. So how do we get the suck out of your application? That's what we're going to talk about. And you know, it just so happens that our sponsor, Catchpoint, they major on end user monitoring. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to talk to them. Okay, so I've got the Catchpoint guys on the line. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself and then tell me how does Catchpoint deal with end user monitoring from the definition of Gartner uh, digital experience monitoring, end user monitoring and RUM? Yeah, so uh, my name is Pramod Solutions Engineer in Catchpoint. Uh, so using the Catchpoint platform, which is the SaaS based service, you will be able to continuously monitor performance, reliability, reachability, and availability of your application, be it external or any internal services that you're delivering. And using Catchpoint Synthetic, using these agents that we have deployed across 825 locations across the world, you can continuously monitor the performance, availability, downtime using a proactive approach, right? And these agents are deployed across real ISPs from which your end users would be coming on from and using simulated transactions or API monitors, you will be able to continuously measure, monitor the availability performance of your service. And then we also have real user monitoring, wherein we provide you a JavaScript snippet that you can add within your application, and that collects performance data as seen by your end users from their real devices, from their browsers, and send it back to Catchpoint using Rub you will be able to understand the conditions and characteristics of your end users to help you understand like, hey, how's, how's the performance across different parts of the world that I'm delivering content to? How is it across different ISPs? How is it across different browsers? This way you get an understanding of the experience of your actual end users, help you understand how you can optimize the experience that you're delivering and both data, synthetic and RAM, you can have it on a single pane of glass view that will help you correlate, contrast these two set of data that we're collecting from one, the nodes, and two, from the real users. So tell me, why do you need both the synthetic and the real user sessions? Why is that important? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so synthetic, it is a proactive approach for monitoring. It runs in a 24-7 manner. So let's say, uh, for example, salesforce.com, right? Uh, if it goes down at 6 a.m. Monday morning, with Synthetic, the IT team of the organization will be notified immediately that there is an issue going on without the need for RUM data. Because RUM data will be collected only after 8 a.m. when the employees log in. But because of Synthetic, since it is proactive, when an application goes down or faces performance issues, the Synthetic is going to immediately notify the appropriate teams. In this case, it's the IT team that, hey, there is an issue going on with Salesforce, investigate before your users log in at 8 a.m. So really, with Catchpoint, if you use these monitors correctly, you can be completely proactive and you should know, your company should know 
when there's a problem, hopefully before your customer does. Well, that was a lot of information that we gained from Catchpoint, and I really like their software. It's got some really cool graphs, some of them I haven't seen before. So we're going to be learning more and more about Catchpoint Solutions uh, as we go through these episodes, because they are a major sponsor for this. But you know what? After all of that information, I'm kind of hungry. You know where we're going? Dreamland Barbecue. Now, Dreamland Barbecue is based in Tuscaloosa, but we're going through Mobile, and they just happen to have a satellite location there. So that's where we're going to stop at for the evening, and I got to say, this is one of my favorite places in the southern part of the United States for barbecue. The sauce is different, the ribs are different, they don't even really need any sides, and all they do is they give you some white bread, some sauce, and some ribs, and say, go to it. So... I'm up for the challenge. Are you? So we finally made it to our destination and life is good because we're in Dreamland, baby. Okay, Dreamland Barbecue. I got some ribs, some chicken. I got my bread. I got my sauce. I got my beans. I got my mac and cheese. I got my coleslaw. And I got my half and half sweet tea. Only thing I'm missing now is my bib. Let's get it on, man. Ooh, it's a little cold this morning. Technically, this is day number three of the performance tour. A little chilly as we get into Alabama and leave my warm state of Florida. Um, this chill reminds me of my cousin, Ingve Moore. Uh, from Swedish descent, somewhere over there. And uh, man, he's a guitar playing guy. A little cocky. Yeah, one day you should meet him. You're a worm. I'm sure he's always got some advice. You're a weasel. Especially for me. There are four things never to do with the ukulele. One, play Sunday Bloody Sunday by U2. Two, play Hotel California by the Eagles. Play some silly over the rainbow cover using some stupid location like Sarasota, Florida. Somewhere in Sarasota. Four, trying to make it sound like a classical guitar. Oh. I am a rock god. You? Not so much.